AI make the world graphical? I add value through my products. I am an animator. I am a filmmaker. I develop trends. I transform designs to reality. I create environments. I translate stories to furniture. I design experiences. I'm an immersive media designer. I design mobility. This is not only a design institute. This is a design lab. Join us in our design movement. Before we begin with our brand ki baate, I would request Professor Ranjana Dani uh, to introduce us to the talk that we are going to have today about brands. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Parag. A very good morning to all. It's indeed an honor and privilege to be part of the MIT legacy, a legacy that offers varied educational offerings. As part of the MIT Institute of Design, it has been a challenging journey to establish this institute on the design educational map as one of the benchmark destinations in design learning. So I'm from graphic design and we will be talking about brands today. In the department, it's been our endeavor to constantly evolve through updations with new technologies as also teaching methodologies. Our valuable tie-ups with the industry have provided scope and opportunities for learning beyond the classrooms. Definitely, going to where our students are today, there's a great sense of pride as we see our alumni working with some of the top brands. So what is brands? And that's what we are going to talk about today. We see brands all around us. And there are two very, very simple observations that I'm going to make at the onset before we move ahead to the presentation. So, have any of you ever recently bought a product or service? Don't most of us buy brands? And do we buy brands? Possibly we are buying brands, but no, not actually, we are choosing them. So people are not buying products, they are buying brands, and people are not buying brands, they are choosing them. So in today's cluttered markets, it is a huge challenge for designers to design newer brands, fresher ideas, and establish a differentiation in the cluttered market and put out your brand with that differentiation which says, I'm not a me too, but look at me, I'm someone special. I'm someone that you can connect with and I'm someone that can definitely make your world, your life, a lifestyle that you can look forward to. I'm going to ask Parag to move ahead to the presentation and as we show you all the slides, we will be taking you through some deeper tips on things. But yes, do ask us lots of questions on the way, so it can be a more interactive session. Hello and now it's back to brands ki uh, It's going to be simply an introduction to the world of semiotics, sign symbols and communication design for brands. I know these words might seem little foreign to some of us. What is semiotics? What exactly is science? We know what science are, but then what is different about science in context of communication design? But don't worry, that's what we are going to look about today. Um, a little bit about us, uh, MIT and graphic design and Ranjana Ma'am and me. Now you know uh, us a little bit better. Uh, let's move on to design as a problem solving activity. Design is not essentially to make things look pretty or make things look aesthetic, quote unquote, but essentially it is to solve a problem that you have, you have identified all around us. So some of the important elements that we utilize or craft in terms of the visual language for communication is definitely some words that you might have heard and some others, we're going to go on with that. Typography, I'm sure a lot of people know about. 
I'm sure you know what pictures are, whether they are illustrations or photographs. We also craft color palettes and so much more using all these elements across various different projects. So there's a packaging project, there are publication designs, our students even go to nitty gritties of data interpretation and studying the history of design. Moving ahead, we will go to what the term brand really means, but let's start with communication design. Yeah, so uh, today we are uh, going to understand semiotic signs, symbols, branding strategies, but definitely everything is connected through communication design. And uh, to make it easier for us to um, get in touch with things around us, let's start with an example. Things that we see around us as um, we know we live in a very visual world and everything is making an impact. Everything is essentially graphic design all around us. So Amul, all of us have seen these advertisements across billboards and newspapers. We have seen the packagings. We have seen uh, the shops and the products that there are. So essentially what it is, is that there is a brand presence. The visual identity, the visual presence of the brand is evident all around us. All these different touch points, another word that we will get into, is what all these things around us are. What so are like I said earlier, is it the brand that you buy? Exactly. Or are you buying butter and ice cream? If you're buying Amul, you're choosing Amul among so many other butter or ice cream brands that are there. And it is this in terms of a visual identity, also in terms of a specific color palette, maybe the entire look and feel. I think they have set a precedent to how humor as an appeal can beautifully extend this particular brand and reach the hearts of millions so seamlessly. And that's what brands do. They make intangible experiences tangible through so many experiences that people connect with them through. Like Parag said, of course, there have to be touch points. So there's that packaging design there and there's a hoarding and there's this whole array of product packaging that can be available at any of their typical stores. So now that we know that this is what communication design in the context of brands is, uh, what exactly is communication design all around us? So uh, we have just put some words up on the slide. If you see the slide and look at these words, do any of these words mean anything to you? Do you think you can find a connect? Do you think maximalism means something? Do you know what ethnography is? Have you heard of dinks? Okay, so I'm not going to elaborate so many of the words today. However, just to give you a cue of how detailed we go into thinking and planning brand design, I'm just going to tell you about one interesting target group, which is the dinks. And dinks is double income, no kids. Yes, there is a target audience like that for which brands are specially designed. And then if you go through all the other words, quickly Google maybe, you will find a relevance with that to brands. So for any sort of uh, design process, where would we start? How do we begin to understand where to start? And it's exactly what we did in our school days. We ask questions and it's important for us to know what questions to ask. So the basic WH questions that we learned in school, why, who, what, where, when, all these questions are extremely important, not just relevant for branding as a design practice. We'll start with why. Why are we doing whatever we are doing? Uh, it sounds like a very simple question to begin with, like we are doing this for something, but that something has a lot of depth in it. There are so many things as we just uh, saw to think before we try to answer what this why is. So this why can be to inform about something. This why is to create awareness about a particular issue that you have identified. This why in the context of branding is definitely for the brand to persuade the target to choose that particular brand in the whole crowd. And 
essentially it is to facilitate the service that the brand is offering it's also helping people to change their mindsets from something that they were unaware of regarding something that they might be needing so it's about understanding people's aspirations hidden aspirations and then converting them so changing mindsets is a huge huge challenge in brand design as well and then who are we designing for who are the people a very 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 important word that one can never forget about any design is that it is about people so who is our target who is our audience who is going to be using the service and who is going to consume the service again there are so many layers to unpack i mean ranjana ma'am and i can discuss this one slide for half an hour <laughs> so we all know design is user centric right however today it is not so much about broad categories of users or target audiences there's further segmentation like i told you about dings and just in the basic category of say youngsters there can be so many varieties of the same and unless you reach the core of who you are exactly focusing on you will not be able to understand what to design and to come to the exactness of the solution and that's where you come to segmentation and of course that is a huge space for study whether it is to do with consumer study at the onset going to psychology and also to motivational research and then comes the part which is very very relevant to us is what we are going to design i know as design students as aspiring design students this is something that is the most attractive part of graphic design something that is visual in its core so what we are designing is essentially a series of advertisements there are brand identities that define what the brand will look like the look and feel for it and then there are all these allied domains which are connected to the brand extensions like publications so we see brochures and we see booklets about a particular brand there are signages when we are designing a space for a brand if there is a big office that is dedicated to a particular company a brand then of course the signages that are in coherence with the visual language we will design that as well there is packaging i mean right now if i just say flip card you thought of that yellow and you thought of that blue and that is how the brand presence is so effective that you thought of the brand you thought of the packaging that it comes in with we all know about cadbury right <coughs> and at the onset when you look at cadbury the logo is absolutely unforgettable it's there not just on everybody's minds and you can almost see it but it's definitely on everybody's tongue and that in the context of various experiences that it engages in and extends about itself there was a lovely campaign that talked about how far will you go for love we all connect cadbury to love today and that's a beautiful way to extend the brand experience and just adding on to that one more thing uh, what has changed in the recent year is that everything has become very much digital we live in a graphic yet a very digital graphic world so every single brand extension has a space in the digital world as well so every brand is now uh coming up with their own website with their applications and their films and their infographics and motion graphics so the um very dated stereotypical notion of graphic design being print design is definitely evolving and it is uh, encompassing everything that is around us and now that we are living in a digital world i mean to be very honest for the last 2 years everyone was living on screen so definitely brands will also live on screen and so the brand extensions will make sure that we reach to the audience the who that we identified through all these different touch points so the brand identity typically is just the first point hmm. it's just the start of the story and then you see it being experienced across various touch points from print to digital media and yes this is where uh, i was headed that where do we actually make this design happen now we know we, we are going to make an advertisement okay is it going to go in a newspaper is it going to go on say a facebook ad 
is it going to be motion is it going to be an insta reel for that matter so what exactly it is going to do is it going to inform is it going to create awareness so all these different important intentions for your design they help you choose what needs to be done it's like if i have just a little bit of hunger i might not go for a whole thali i'll just go and have bhel at that point bhel was the necessary thing that needed to be done exactly for our brand extensions if the need is to make sure that the presence is felt without giving a very deep message you will go for uh, a solution that is just that catchy and that hooks and that pulls you in so understanding where we actually uh, work with our design is extremely important and yes so now what all is there about brands what all can be done if you just look at the words and look, look at the logos uh, there is maruti there is godrej there are different fonts there are educational books there are wall graphics signages cd covers online shopping websites for cry and everything so <coughs> one thing that is connecting all those different uh, types of visual design that we see around us it is all about a brand everything is about brand they are all connected with the fact that it is all about branding but now uh, we know very briefly that what are the different ways where we can think about brand as part of graphic design but let's get a little deeper and try to understand um, what is it making me feel what is it saying so just as you obviously see that each brand has a different name the nomenclature and you also see that it has a different look which has been crafted through a certain choice of typography the visual elements the color palette each one depicting possibly what the brand offers possibly what the brand wants to establish its persona to be its personality to be and in some way little ideas about what the vision or mission or thinking might be of what that brand stands for so reliance as a name is vastly different from godrej we all know about both these brands there are some very beautiful sensitive brands that work in the sustainable space such as cry and others let's try and see what goes behind building these brands in terms of its visual personality and there comes the word semiotics semiotics if um, you don't know about it now we'll get a very brief idea it's a it's such a deep uh, subject and we can go in depth as much as we can but we'll at least try to understand today that what does semiotic do what is it very easily it is a study of how meanings are made and how reality is represented okay so there are two things that are um, very important here one is representation of reality representation of real life things that we see around us and second is making meaning out of it okay so there are so very typically semiotics is the study of signs and symbols and when you look at signs and symbols we are possibly going to just touch upon some basics within the space and you see signs which are of a direct kind they are called icons there are others which are indexial which have an association and hence the index to something context to something and then there is the symbol which is possibly an arbitrary form which grows with you through association and the meaning of fe and feeling of it is established or connected in terms of how you realize it over time so just to make it uh, a little easier to uh, understand this particular slide if it's not clear to some of you uh, when we see icons we immediately know without thinking anyone would know that this is about uh, male and female figures if we look at the index if we know that this is a man's shoe and this is a woman's shoe then we realize that oh this is about a man and a woman a male and a female and the third symbol if you show this symbol to a child who hasn't been introduced to the idea of this circle with arrow is indicative of uh, a male 
the child wouldn't understand but as we grow up with social conventions and habits and social rules we understand this by thinking about it so icons being very direct index literally just points to okay this is what i'm talking about and symbols they make you think a little bit more so these three basic types of <coughs> signs combinations and development of this is what leads to essentially an identity so now what is a brand i will definitely let ranjana ma'am talk about this so yeah i mean there's some really huge and very very uh, sort of deep uh, very meaningful definitions of the word however one of the simplest and the easiest way to understand brands is to really just go back to since brands are about products and services so products were born in factories they became brands when they reached the head and the heart of the consumer so this as the larger experience and not just as the basic tangible functional aspect of a product becomes the rea realization of a product into a brand so obviously brands are more than just a product they are definitely more than just a service or an identity of the same i said earlier it's an experience so it's synonymous with businesses it's synonymous with their philosophy the spirit definitely the values the vision and mission and attitude the image and style and definitely in this format you can see it's a larger experience what we see as the obvious or through which we reach these various aspects could be the obvious offerings such as the products or the obvious touch points of a communication that comes our way whether it is the identity or the ad for it or maybe a packaging that extends the brand space to us in a physicality but through every touch point the larger experience of the brand is essentially what becomes the base for any designer to take up as a challenge to infuse into these touch points and there comes the word strategy how do we make sure that all these different concepts about brand are we going to realize in visual design or any sort of communication touch point so strategy and strategists essentially play a vital role in creating substantial business model for brands and this is very important for us to understand that brand is a branding is a commercial activity at its core we are definitely influencing persuading people to get connected with the brand and effectively access that service or access that experience that the brand is offering so <coughs> with extension to the strategists designers play an important role in crafting and establishing that brand presence we both of us are just talking about brand presence and it's being an it being an experiential thing and it is what it is that the intangible emotions the context and essence of every single philosophy the attitude the feel of that brand we need to make sure that it is reaching the consumer because that is what matters most that when i think about uh, say nike i immediately have a response to just listening to that name listening to the name of the brand and that attitude of sportsmanship that attitude of get moving and just do it as the uh, the brand tagline says it is percolating in every single thing that nike does even if it's just a tiny advertisement if it's a campaign if it's packaging everywhere that attitude is reflected and it also reflects in the business the way they run it's not just about again making things look nice it's also making them meaningful and that's where strategy comes in place so to summarize for any designer it is not relevant or important only to look at a visual language starting with an identity design mm. and how great a color will look or feel yeah. to extend the brand attitude as parag pointed out it's the strategy that is developed behind it and for every designer it becomes significant to align <coughs> to that strategy with a certain level of depth with a certain level of understanding and possibly re research the entire context of the business themselves to be clear about what the strategy is 
and how the strategy will establish itself or articulate itself or can present itself, communicate itself mm -hmm. through the brand touch points. And there we are, our beloved and not so beloved <laughs> Starbucks. Why uh, I certainly chose this as an example because the sheer presence of Starbucks uh, extended across the uh, across our life, and it's it's coffee. It's just one thing that we probably okay. Do. So, Parag, let me tell them the story. Yeah. So, do you come to Starbucks for coffee? I'm sure that's not the only reason. You're coming here to possibly jam with your friends or maybe to strike a deal with somebody for a business meet that you have come together for. It's a gang of girls that's just meeting after a long time and coffee becomes one of the many, many reasons or many, many <laughs> aspects that you might want to consider while you're around. Of course, over time, We've all become so very knowledgeable about the types of coffees that we can have. In India, at one point, starting from the basic coffees and then moving into the variants from across the world is what Starbucks brought to the table. However, if you look at the identity and if you look at the imagery there, if you look at the color palette across, because it's the space that extends all these aspects, what do you catch? Do you really catch that at level one or do you catch that over time through experience? Do you start relating to Starbucks as your destination to be when you want to have a serious business meet? Do you want to come here for just meeting up with friends and then Starbucks becomes the opportune place to do that? So what is Starbucks? At the end of the day, it's definitely more than just a coffee place. And that then is what the brand experience is about. And that's what we're talking about from the onset. It's more than just the identity. You find <coughs> the experience through various interesting touch points like, of course, the coffee and the tastes. Possibly the whiff of the smell comes as soon as you enter the door. And that's one great touch point of who the brand is. But going ahead to the store space, space definitely the packaging, the digital pages of the website that you've possibly seen before or the large screen that you see in that space. Definitely the merchandise is huge as a touch point. And the brochures, folders, the menu card on the table. Now all these become the viable touch points through which you understand and experience the brand. But again coming back to the same question, is it just a coffee space today? Mm. No, it's not. It's much more. And that larger experience of what the brand is, is what people have started relating to. Their aspirations have moved beyond just coming to a place to have coffee, but to a place that means much more through coffee. And possibly that is what we're talking about when we say the brand experience is the big or the larger thing that designers are looking at or generating through their design solutions. And this is what a brand promises, where a brand becomes stronger when you know what the brand is offering. So uh, just look at the logos on your screen. There is Coca-Cola, there is G, there is Unilever, Harley Davidson, of course, Apple. So like I said earlier, every brand has lots to offer, right? But when you narrow the focus, the clarity establishes itself. So most brands use something that is called a tagline. Apple says, think different. And that's the larger ideology <coughs> established in so many different ways. Uh, Unilever, for example, has adding vitality to life. So this idea, this, I'll use the word brand promise, is actually, you can see it's, it's reflecting in its products, in its strategies, and even the identity that is developed for Unilever, GE, Harley Davidson, uh, think about Coca-Cola, happiness in a bottle, which cannot be truer. Like, uh, I was just discussing uh, a design project with a student of mine, and we discussed the same thing that how a simplest of idea, that happiness in a bottle, is extended through colors and with Coca-Cola, now it is almost synonymous that when you have to have a good time, you have a Coke and you just chill. So uh, when you have a specific 
idea, the focused uh, intention of your communication, there is immense scope to expand the experience and go beyond just visual part of branding. So how do we do that? It is amplifying your brand, your positioning of the brand and the essence of the brand. So when I talk about amplifying, uh, ma'am, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so not to take a class here, but you know, <laughs> some core aspects that uh, one will be designing when you're designing for brands. Uh, we are looking at core values of businesses. We are looking at the brands <coughs> or the businesses attributes. We are looking at a competitive advantage. I talked about differentiation earlier. And we are looking at strategies. The second big thing here is definitely positioning because in a cluttered market when you don't want to be a me too but you want to be something specific and significant then you talk about a value proposition that sets you apart. Of course you start fitting slowly with experience and use into a certain business category. You become a premium brand, you become a reasonable brand, you become an empathetic brand. So brand essence is another quotient where the central idea of the brand starts becoming apparent over time. It unifies all the various touch points into one unifying concept. There's always a key message that you'll find in every brand overuse. Can you see it at the beginning? Is that the obvious intention of every designer? No. It's possibly something that is definitely strategically planned but very, very gently inserted into various touch points to be experienced over time. Every brand must have a very, very deliberate look and feel and tone of voice when a designer sets out to create its visual language. And then this I'm pretty sure none of uh, you know about. There are, there are two ways of thinking about brands. One is inside out and one is outside in. So what uh, the name suggests, uh, inside out is you start with the stakeholders and the core people in the brand, the core values of the brand. It is the focus on aligning the brand activities. It is based on the vision for the future. And if you look at it the other way, the outside in approach, then it is about the user, it is about the consumer more than the user because everything definitely is about the user. But it is about solving a key point, a key pain point. And then it is about consumer trends. So that's why if you think about dairy milk, a very good example, the advertisements or the campaigns that go in Jan and February are very much different in India uh, than they are in say October and November because as we all know October and November is the time when all the festivities are happening. So everything is aligned towards that trend that will attract the consumers and then <coughs> in Jan and Feb of course as we are leading to the 40, 14th Feb everything is focused towards that. Everything is about that. So it is a consumer-led approach to brand. So what we put out over here is just two interesting facts for you. Uh, just let's look at the brands and the types that they can be. So there are the inside-out brands which are more stakeholder-led and there are the outside-in brands which are consumer-led. You'll see the examples over here. So Dev, Dove is definitely about the consumer motivate that motivates a brand to even be born. And if you look at the stakeholder-led brand, there's a strong business ideology or a business logic or a business plan there, whether it is from Unilever or IBM as to how or what they want to set out there and what they want to facilitate the communities with. So now we'll come to the golden circle. We'll move on to the next slide where we get a little deeper, which is encapsulating what we just discussed, the four questions that we had that who, why, what, where and how. So all, uh, I mean this slide sort of summarizes the different aspects of designing for communication and the core of the brand. But now, uh, so like we said earlier, uh, how does a brand really get designed and 
what are the steps or the stages that you take while designing for a brand. So definitely it's the who, which is what is the brand for? Who am I? Is the first question that the brand wants to uh, answer when they start designing for a certain business. So the core values, the personality traits. What gives you answers with reference to the offerings of a brand? Or the differentiation in a cluttered market that they will establish to set themselves apart. How do you do it? Would be, how would you want a target audience to perceive you? Yeah. How will you connect with a target audience? And that gives you answers about how will you design for a brand? Where is definitely the market space or the various other platforms, whether print or digital, that you will establish or set yourselves in terms of the touch points through which the <coughs> consumers will connect with you or grasp you. Ma'am, just use the word personality traits. And this is something very uh, interesting for all of us to know yeah. that there are brand archetypes where there are different types of brand personalities. I know like it's a concept, it's a company, but now we know that to its core, it has a message, right? So it has an attitude and how do we connect with it is through the different types of personalities these brands project and that's how we get to know them. So uh, just taking you through the different uh, representative archetypes, let's say, uh, if you think about Dove, the innocent, if you think about Audi, it, it's the sage who has this authority to it. <coughs> then we have uh, the explorer, there is the hero, there is the magician. So there is this sense of going beyond what we know. There is this sense of uh, a new experience that Apple definitely offers with all its touch points. There is this rebel attitude that Harley Davidson has. And then we have the regular guy that is IKEA that is definitely helping you with your life. Then we have uh, the Jester and Skittles be being a very fun brand in itself. It suits the personality to the point. Then we have the lover, the ruler, and the caregiver, the creator. So all these, again, okay, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a representative list. All of them have a different attitude. You can imagine these brands as people around you and how they are influencing, how they, are, how they matter to you at the end of the day. So these are some simple words in which each brand has been given a personality. And through these words, you can identify or expand what this brand might be establishing as who it is, what it offers, where it stands, and what largely it wants to say about itself. Over time, people start associating with brands as the sage or the hero. So now we'll come to the visual design for brands where <coughs> without getting in too much depth because I mean, this is not a class class lit. We are just discussing things about design. Let's look at how we convert the brand experience from certain intangible pointers or cues to tangible visual language. So what all do you use when you design for a brand? There are design inspirations that each one takes as a designer, the challenges to take references from across stuff that is around you, to look at trends, to look at trends for composition styles, maybe imagery as how people are using it, maybe in the digital space as of how gradients and layering is becoming a very, very significant aspect. Typography is becoming huge where brands are actually designing their own logo type to create the differentiation and to make it their own. Of course, color, like I said, definitely plays a huge part. Just look at your shelves out there in the markets and you'll see people relate to brands quite immediately in a shop via a color palette. Maybe a certain differentiation in a color palette. And then how do we make this happen is by designing a visual language which basically turns the design strategy into design directions. Now look at the word strategy being the broader, uh, let's say, of course it's a direction, but it has a bigger plan and direction definitely has a specific steps essentially that you can execute. And so 
uh, what ma'am said that turning that intangible attitude into tangible outcomes this is what your vis uh, visual language essentially does with the look and feel and tone of the voice which is rooted in the personality the core values so everything is connected we keep saying that in design that design doesn't work in isolation but even the design process doesn't work in isolation we always have to keep in mind where we started and where we are headed so to sort of sum it up let's go through a quick uh, case study so after putting out so many very very vital terms in branding or brand design let's look at a story let's look at how a certain brand is built this particular story was shared with me via one of our ex students an alumni who studied from the first batch that passed out from the bds program he was working with future groups and this was his initial level of explorations that was done and how the brand was being built is what he shared with me i've pulled out some of the context here to establish how a brand story is developed from understanding the core and finally coming out not just with visual language but with certain ways in which that visual language is articulated across certain touch points so the case study here is about housing.com i'm sure you all heard about it there were these large brilliant vibrant hoardings out there a couple of years back the ones on functional and mundane subject of homes housing buying a house renting a house has become aggressively aspirational the target audience shifting from the older age group to a much younger a much more uh, sort of you know affluent uh, target audience that can or could afford engaging in this particular activity so nuancing the individuality of the young this young ambitious consumer it called for telling colorful vibrant stories to spell out an emotion of celebration it is a celebration for a youngster when he buys a home when he rents a home when he crafts his home to extend his personality via it so shobit told me this story and developed context with reference to mind maps moving into yeah so the color now, yeah looking at the color palette and the developing of the visual language in uh, basically it started with that aggressively aspirational value and then making it of course it has to be translated through visual design through colors and the visual design that is done so for these youngsters moving up was the core of the brand and as led by chahal and the way he projected it the look up as the upward pointing arrow mark was the way in which they wanted to extend a very simple cue a very simple symbol alignment to what they were talking about what the brand was offering as you can see here this is a flexible brand identity which means it doesn't have to stay within one color palette or one color context it moves through all these four because with celebration as the quotient the pink yellow blue green were the best ways to extend a context like this and offering like of this kind to the young indians to the young millennials and so with ambitious vision of to help the world live better very very crucial uh, words to guide us through the process that to outsee to outthink to outdo so the exuberance that the brand is proposing to uh, what used to be uh, like we started with a very mundane or uh, not so exciting space to begin with so look up to the brand for a better life so this became uh, such a strong guidance for the visual design as well to move that strategy to a design direction so it uh, had an emotional quotient which had to be established through very very specific tangibles so <coughs> look up and the arrow were great cues but then there were other aspects of the brand such as optimism the aspirational quotient the elegance of the brand the confident clear passionate game changing experience that had to be established and in that what he did in terms of converting a very very mundane very very typical 
technical, very, very official looking context business to a slightly more emotional one was the huge challenge. He extended the basic four color palette to its variants. And here you see its other color extensions as in the secondary and the tertiary color palette coming into play. You will see that actually ex extended across some of these collaterals in the way that they work. If you see that ad on the right, the one that says we love data, those were some of their first initial ads that reached out to people to give in inputs regarding who they were, what they wanted in terms of homes, what they were looking for in terms of housing. And there then, as you can see, the simple logic was moving from RBGY definitely as the basic <coughs> color palette, but just look at how this color palette has become slightly more vibrant, slightly more uh, sort of, you know, unified in the way yeah. that it works well together, but also creating a benchmark in the way that a brand of this kind, a business of this kind, which had typically been housing in terms of, you know, very, very official red and blues changed to a very vibrant space because the target audience changed, because their aspirations demanded for something like this to be seen. These are some more aspects where the brand stretched itself to establish its presence. Interesting ads here where <laughs> even the touch points that were used had very interesting ideologies extended in the typography. So if you're looking at the wording per se here, they say super attitude wanted, super humans wanted in terms of people that they were hiring for their brand. If you go to the next few touch points, you would see the t-shirt of possibly one of the marketeers wearing something that looked up and in those various arrows, you will see certain aspirational quotes or thoughts being extended. The most interesting thing to really understand was about when it was supposed mm -hmm. to be launched. So it couldn't have been a better timing to align the brand launch except with aligning it to a certain specific <clears throat> season that amply meant celebration. Mm. So Holi was the launch pad and the colors suited the whole context. We all buy homes, we all rent homes, we all move into new homes on auspicious occasions, Diwali and others being some of them. But here, for the youngsters and celebration being the core, Holi was possibly a great, great idea and that's what uh, this brand was all about. So, having told you this one brand story and just a gist of how the whole visual language or the look and feel and also the vital touch points of the brand were crafted. Let's move to questions. Yes. So that's it for brands ki baate from us. Uh, we are really eager to know what questions you have, what doubts or uh, insightful observations you have and we'll try to answer them. Please write your questions in the chat box and we will get to them. It's so curious that like this one design process of any brand is we sometimes forget that it also has to be timed. Yeah. This this uh, holy thing is such a interesting thing to notice. So that's what strategic design is all about in terms of when a celebratory context can get the right kind of a. So the color palette actually developed because holy was the launch pad. Yeah. So if you don't have any questions right now, we are eagerly looking forward to your questions. Uh, do send them in, uh, do put them up, and we'll be happy to answer them right here in this space. And feel free to connect with either me or Parag at any point in the future. Uh, looking forward to your feedback, looking forward to your queries. That's all for now. Thanks a ton. I make the world graphical. I add value through my products. I am an animator. I am a filmmaker. I develop trends. 
I transform designs to reality. I create environments. I translate stories to furniture. I design experiences. I'm an immersive media designer. I design mobility. This is not only a design institute. This is a design lab.